On the line with us, Jack Abramoff, the former lobbyist, author of a new book, Capital Punishment, uh, capital with an O, as in the capital of the United States. Capital Punishment, the hard truth about Washington corruption from America's most notorious lobbyist, his website, Abramoff.com. Jack Abramoff, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. You know, I never thought I'd say that. I, I spent a lot of years <laughs> trashing you on the air, and uh, I thought yeah. you were the poster boy for corruption in D.C. And I, I hear you condemning, and rightly so, uh, politicians who are on the take, yeah. and, but I haven't heard you condemning lobbyists who are making this happen. In fact, you brag about how for the $80 million you charge, you delivered $6 billion worth of value to corporations, hustlers, rich people, Indian tribes, whatever. Um, Shouldn't that be illegal also? Oh, absolutely. I, I, you know, I, the only reason I think you haven't heard me bashing the other side is maybe you just haven't heard the other shows. I mean, I've been uh, absolutely after what I used to be, to be honest okay. with you. All right. Well, in that context, then, and, uh, there were people who were involved with you um, in what you were doing. And I'm, I'm curious what happened. You, you, you said at one point that you had 100 members of Congress in your pocket. Why is it that only one of them went to jail, Bob Nate? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, look, obviously I wasn't deeply uh, in the uh, room with the uh, FBI and the Justice Department as they made decisions on who to prosecute. But I do know that some of the rules that the Congress has created for itself and some of the precedents that they have make it very tough to go get them. Uh, for example, the speech and debate clause, I think you remember the uh, cash in uh, Congressman Jefferson's uh, freezer at home. If that freezer had been in his office, he'd still be enjoying the cash. Mm-hmm. So I know that they've had difficulty in terms of... Uh, of speech and debate clause and other things, but, you know, I, I wasn't uh, in the investigations and, um, you know, in terms of uh, decisions and what they were doing, but... Well, if you have the information on, them. you know, that, that, that could cause other members... For example, uh, John McCain hmm. did not call Ralph Reed to testify before the Senate. Ralph Reed was part of your, uh, you know, several of your schemes, actually. He was in Scotland with you and with, uh, with uh, um, Bob Ney. Uh, he was in a secret partnership with you that screwed the Indians, and Ralph Reed made a whole pile of money off it. Why did John McCain not call him to testify, and why didn't you rat out Ralph Reed? Well, uh, first of all, I didn't. Uh, I answered every question I was asked by investigators. I didn't uh, rat out or not rat out. They had 850,000 emails I wrote, so they mm-hmm. hardly needed, frankly, to even ask me questions. But uh, everything that Ralph did and everybody else was in front of them. In terms of McCain, uh, that's a very curious question, to be honest with you. I fully expected him to be called and uh, was quite uh, stumped when he wasn't called. So, Do you think that it might have something to do with the fact that members of the Bush administration and you know other senior Republicans, but specifically House staff, uh, or excuse me, White House staff uh, from the Bush administration were regularly eating and drinking at your Signature's restaurant on your dime, and that uh, Tom DeLay was eating there, and that Karl Rove was eating there, and you were paying for it? Well, first of all, I didn't pay for Karl Rove when he ate there. He paid his, himself, but you know they didn't have. Are you sure? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that that I'm that I'm certain of. Uh, but in terms of, uh, they didn't have any hesitation bringing me up there. I owned the restaurant, not Ralph. Uh, as to your very good question about Ralph, I just don't know the answer to it. But nobody had any compunction about uh, dragging me up there. But but was was were other staff members of the Bush White House eating at your restaurant on your dime? Uh, on my dime, no. The, the folks in the Bush administration, the actual uh, executive branch folks that I knew, were very careful not to let me treat them there. Mm. Uh, I can't say that that's true, by the way, for other lobbyists who ate there. Don't forget, I wasn't the only one who ate in the restaurant. Sure. I mean, it, was a, it was a big restaurant. We had people both who worked for me and people who didn't work for me uh, availing themselves of it. So I can't say for certain about them. But I, the very few people that I dined with from the Bush administration, they were very careful about that. Okay. Uh, you, you, you put a million bucks into Ed Bauckham, who was uh, the uh, ex-chief of staff for Tom DeLay. Uh, why wasn't he charged with anything, and why wasn't Tom DeLay charged for his involvement with you? Well, again, I, you know, I can't answer why people weren't charged. Uh, I know I was charged. And, uh, right. You know, well, they, I, if the Republicans were, were protecting all these other folks, and it it's certainly looks that way to me, and, and you know, feel free to reality check me on my sure. conspiracy theory here. Um, uh, you know, Ralph Reed was, seems to be, have been protected. Ed Buckham seems to have been protected. It was basically like you know, they decided to throw you and Bob to the, to the, you know, to the wolves. Um, why? Well, first of all, I, I want to say that I don't know about the upper echelons of the Justice Department and what decisions were made. I can only comment on the people 
at the lower level of the prosecutors and the rest I work with. I don't think they were out to give anybody a pass based on politics. Uh, but again, the decisions, you know, as to where things went. They, but but they had to work with what them. they were given. Yeah, but, but, you know, they did a very thorough investigation of uh, 2,000 people, by the way. And mm. I have to tell you, there's, a, there's as good a question to ask as well about the, the Democrats. I mean, there were, I had Democrats sure. who worked for me, and, you know, I had a bunch of congressmen and senators who were Democrats who got plenty of money from us. And, you know, the Bush administration, maybe in their clumsiness or their ineptitude or whatever, uh, allowed the scandal to be completely seen as a Republican scandal. It was a bipartisan scandal, and, uh, you know, it was bizarre to me. But, again, and, you know, so I, I when, privy to that. When, when Reagan came into office, my understanding is that there were a few hundred lobbyists in this town, and now there's over 10,000. Yeah, at least. Right. Yeah, and I've heard numbers as high as 38,000 if you yeah. consider people who are like New Gingrich, who, you know, take a million bucks from Fannie Mae, but doesn't call himself a lobbyist. Um, He's a history professor. Yes, exactly. So between lobbyists and history professors, there's a lot. There's a whole pile up in this town, and there's a hell of a lot of money, as as you right. well know, and, and as sure. I've noticed the year that I've been living here. Um, and how do we put an end to that? You know, yeah. particularly given the Supreme Court's uh, position that that money is speech. Yeah, I think that there are a few things that I, I write about in the book uh, in capital punishment um, in terms of how to go after this stuff. Uh, when I was sitting in prison, frankly, uh, and, and uh, you know, obviously after I was done and on the floor, I stopped being a lobbyist and stopped being uh, uh, politically partisan in the sense of uh, I didn't really, I'm not beholden to anyone anymore. And so I started writing uh, and thinking about, you know, if I were still a lobbyist, what are the kind of things I would try to stop? Because the kind of reform they usually do, nobody cares about. It's actually a joke. Right. So what are the things I would stop? So the first thing that I, I say is we've got to absolutely go after the money, as, as you mentioned. The fact that, that people who are lobbying the federal government are getting things from the federal government, special advantages, the stuff that makes people mad, the stuff that puts people on the street for the uh, Occupy movement and the Tea Party movement and all the rest, this stuff has got to be stopped. And I think one of the ways How? to stop it is take the money away from the congressmen that are coming from these special interests. Make it so that if you are a lobbyist or you are somebody who's lobbying or hiring a lobbyist uh, or hiring a strategic advisor or whatever the euphemism Newt and the rest of them use, uh, you can't give any money politically. Zero. Not a but then they, then they get the, around this with 527s. You've got the Koch well, brothers we setting we up. we've got to get rid of that. I mean, okay, well, but the Supreme Court says you can't do that. You know, the corporate, corporate speech. We're going to have to find a way to do it, whether it's a constitutional amendment or whatever. But I've got to tell you, and Tommy, I know you see this. People are just pissed off about this. They're oh, yeah. Off. Welcome to the club. Yeah. So would you support a constitutional amendment that says that corporations aren't people and money isn't speech? Well, I think it's got to say a lot more than that, to be honest with you. There's a lot more, but there's a lot more problems here. But if you, you did know, that, then you could, then you could start, package. then you could pass the laws that you're talking about. Right now, the thing that is impeding those laws is the is the fact that corporations are considered persons and money is considered speech. You do those, you blow those things up, and then you can start passing laws stopping the revolving door, stopping the buying off of members of Congress, etc. I agree, but I think if you go for the constitutional amendment, you've got to go for everything you need at once because it's a very difficult process. As you know, look how often they they. Uh, amend the Constitution, you know. Very never. rarely. Yeah. So, so if you're going to go for it, I think you've got to put together a comprehensive uh, package that's going to stop all of this stuff. And by the way, you attack as well, to some degree, the speech and debate clause that keeps these guys from going to jail when they, when they perform all sorts of shenanigans up on the Hill. So the, the, oh, the speech and debate clause in the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've got to go after the things that they're using and they're taking advantage of. That is of. creating they're immunity they're for them, essentially. It's, it's the reason, essentially, why they, why they can do insider trading right now. Exactly. And the fact that they make laws that don't apply to them. Yeah. I mean, it's an outrage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Jack Abramoff, his uh, website, abramoff.com, his new book, Capital Punishment, The Hard Truth About Washington Corruption from America's Most Notorious Lobbyist. Jack, thanks for dropping by today. Thanks for having me. Good talking with you.